comes to dwell. And so this woman is dealing with history. This woman is saying, our father worshiped God on the mountain. She's talking about Abraham. She's talking about Isaac. And she's talking about Jacob. He says, our father. Now this woman, just remember, this woman is the great, great, great granddaughter of Jacob. So she's saying, my father worshiped God on the mountain. Amen. On the mountain. Now, I want you to underline worshiping, worship God on the mountain because, amen, I'm about, I'm about to open it because, amen, I'm about to open it because the, 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 the Old Testament, when it says that our father worship God on the mountain, they limit God to one particular place. They limit God to one particular place because there's only one place that you must go to worship God. In the Old Testament, there's only one place. God never used to dwell on everywhere. He dwelt on one place. And that was the place of Jerusalem. Read. Jesus said unto her, uh -huh. Woman, believe me, that hour cometh, when ye shall neither in this mountain, nor yet at Jerusalem. You hear that? Worship it's, the Father. You see? So now, to worship God, you have to go to, to what? Jerusalem or the mountain. But Jesus says, believe me that the hour has come that you have the need to go on the mountain of Jerusalem because they limit God to one particular place. In church, this is a lot of times how we limit God to one particular place. Most people only worship God in the church. But they don't worship God home because they limit God just to one particular place. And Jesus is saying now, amen, the time is come. Amen. The time is come. That you don't have to go to Jerusalem to worship God. That you don't have to go on the mountain to worship God. So how are you going to worship him now? Read. You worship, you know, you know not what. You know what we worship. For you read that again? You worship, you know not what. We know what we worship. For salvation is of the Jews. Okay. What Jesus said, you worship. You worship. But you don't know who you're worshiping. You worship, but you don't know who you're worshiping. Jesus. When we call out for the worship team, it's very important that we know that the worship team know who they're worshiping. A worship team is not because the person can sing good. It don't mean they are a worshiper. Because many of us born with gift. The Bible said the gift and the calling of God is without repentance. A sinner can sing good. A sinner can sing so good. I tell you, he will shake the chandelier. But they are not saved. So we cannot identify the gift with the anointing or the gift with the spirit. Every man, every woman that comes into this world are gifted. And if you have a gift of singing, automatically you can sing any song and sound good. Because you're born with that gift. But that will make you a worshiper. There's two things that must qualify a true worshiper. There's two things that must qualify a true worshiper. And if you don't have either one of these, then you are not a worshiper. Number one, a worshiper must have the truth. Number two, a worshiper must worship him in spirit. It's impossible to worship God without truth and what went out in the spirit. So they worship and they know not what they worship. Now, on all that right there, and we're going to go through some other scriptures because we want to know who we worship. We just don't want to be making a bunch of noise in the church and dropping and jogging and feeling all emotional and no deliverance and nothing happening. Do you want to do that? Do you want to go just clawing and shouting uh, uh, or we have a good time but nobody delivered, nobody set free? Because you make a lot of noise, but it didn't move God. Hallelujah. Because you don't even know who you're making noise to. You don't even know God. So, so, so in order to worship him, you've got to be in the spirit, and you've got to be in the truth. Now, just open up the scripture. Let me open it up. Just open it up. Okay. Amen. I'm going to open it up. So, you're going to, so when we worship God, we're not going to worship God based on the favorite song we like, based on the, 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 the keyboard and the drama, but based on the spirit and in the truth. Let's go to 
and it never changed. Let's go to Hebrew, Hebrews chapter, chapter 13 and verse 8. It never changed. It never changed. Hebrews 13 and verse 8. It never changed. God never changed. Amen? I said God never changed. He never changed. Amen. Okay, let's start, let's start building this. In Hebrews chapter 13 verse 8, it says, Jesus Christ, the same Jesus Christ, so he, he never changed. So if he says you got to worship him in spirit and in truth, it's still the same. It never changed. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Now, let's go on. Let's take it much deeper. Let's go deeper. Let's go to First Chronicles chapter 28 and verse 9. First Chronicles chapter 28, verse 9. Write these, write these down. It's very important. Write these down. First Chronicles 28 and verse 9. Because we have so much people saying they're worshiping God and don't even know who they're worshiping. Making a bunch of noise and they're worshiping nobody and nothing happening. Because you can't worship God without the Spirit and you can't worship Him without the truth. Amen? Amen. Jesus told the woman that your father worship. Yes, you all worship God, but you all don't know who you all worship. And what is that? And thou, Solomon, my son, know thou the God of thy father. You hear that? You hear that? Now David is telling Solomon, his son, to know the God of his father. To know the God. So in order to worship God, you got to know him. You got to know him. You can't worship God if you don't know him. So David is passing this on to his son and saying, Solomon, you got to know the God of your father. Go ahead. And serve him with a perfect heart. And serve him with a what? Perfect heart. Amen. And with a willing mind. Go ahead. For the Lord searches all hearts. My God. And understandeth all, of, all the imaginations of the God. You see, we can't fool God. You can't fool God. When you think you're worshiping, God is searching your heart and no one is in it. We can't fool him. Because he's searching our heart. And he knows our imagination. So he doesn't really see exactly who you are. Go ahead. If thou seek him, he will be found of thee. But if thou forsake him, he will cast thee off forever. Amen. Let's go to Mark, let's go to Mark chapter 12, verse 30. We can go through some scriptures and then we can go back. Mark chapter 12, verse, verse 30. You have it? Say amen. amen. Go ahead. Thank you, Jesus. Mark 12, uh -huh. And thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart. It you see? So in order to worship God, you've got to love him with everything. First of all, with all your heart. Read. And all, with all thy soul. With all thy soul, your mind, your will, all of that. And with all thy strength. And with every strength that you have in your body. This is the first commandment. And this is the first commandment. To worship God. So when 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 folks don't worship him, they don't love him. Because if they love him, they'll worship him. God is looking for a true worshiper. God is looking for a true worshiper. God ain't looking for no one that's just making noise. He wants a true worshiper. Because when a true worshiper worship, God show up. And when God shows up, deliverance is gonna happen. It says, when God shows up, deliverance will take place. 
a true worshiper. They worship, but they don't know who they're worshiping. We don't want to be like that. You want to worship and know who you're worshiping. Ephesians 5, verse 18 to 21. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 18 to 21. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 18 to 21. Hallelujah. Bless the name of Jesus. We can get, we can get something tonight. So we can get something tonight. God want to give you something tonight. He want to give you the word. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 18 to 21. And we read. And be not drunk with wine, wherein is excess. Amen. And amen. That means you. you Automatically, it, it, it's self-explainable. Don't be, don't be drunk with what? Why? We? But be filled with the Spirit. But be filled with the Spirit. See, you can't worship God without being filled with the Spirit. So when we have folks that say they're worshiping God and don't have the Spirit, they're not worshiping God. Because it's, it's, it's the Spirit that qualifies a worshiper. Every worshiper needs the Holy Ghost. If you have the Holy Ghost, then you don't, you're not in the truth. 